And welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. Investors today are struggling to try to understand what the protests over the weekend mean, how it relates to the reopening, and how it relates to consumer confidence in general. ETFs do play a part in this. We have spoken often about ESG, environmental, social, and governance funds. There are a number of very large ETFs. We're going to be talking about that exclusively today. But if you're not familiar with them, just a quick recap. Environmental talks about issues of the environment, obviously. Social having to do with relations with employees, customers, stakeholders. Governance looks at leadership and pay and shareholders' rights and inclusiveness. All things that people are interested in, particularly what's going on over the weekend. With all this interest, let's talk to two experts in the field. Mona Nakfi is the head of ESG strategy over at Standard & Poor's. Tom Lydon's over at ETFtrends.com and a good friend of ours for many, many years. Mona, let me start with you. Can, can you address, and I'm wondering, I don't want to stretch this analogy too much, but could you ad address uh, ESG in light of the protests that have been gone, going on over the weekends, uh, particularly about the need for more inclusiveness. Uh, that seems to be a major issue of the governance part uh, of ESG. But I wonder if you can explain how you can incorporate some of those concerns, obviously, people have uh, expressed in some of those protests. Absolutely, Bob. You know, I think what, what these protests are demonstrating is that people really do have very uh, strong convictions about these types of issues. They really do care deeply about all of this. And ESG is just investing is just another channel through which people can align their values with their actions by, by incorporating these types of considerations into their investments. Um, in terms of how, you know, we look at ESG, when it comes to the S&P Global ESG scores, we do take into account things like how companies are behaving with respect to their overall stakeholders. So not just their their employees and their shareholders, but how do they interact with their broader community, which is really important in terms of uh, building goodwill in times of stress like this. Um, it's also important through ESG to take into account things like diversity. You know, how does a company actually um, hire, what are its hiring practices? Is it diverse throughout its broader business operations? And I think these are all the types of issues that, that these protests are demonstrating are very important to many people that ESG can help capture. Yeah, and I want to get back to that. I want to talk some, about some of the philosophy behind ESG. But, Tom, I want to just turn to you. I wonder uh, if we've seen inflows this year in ESG. We've seen them for the last several years. I used to say two years ago that everybody talked about it, but nobody ever did anything about ESG. It was like the weather. Everyone complained about it. Nobody ever did anything about it. And that note, it didn't attract much money. Now it is attracting money. It has been in Europe for a while, but even in the United States. I'm wondering if the events we've seen over the weekend will accelerate that interest. I don't want to try to stretch this analogy too far about what's going on with the protests and ESG, but there is some kind of tangential relationship, Tom. Is this going to bring even more money into that and maybe even accelerate more discussion about environmental, social and governance issues around investing? Well, I, uh, Bob, I think you're right. I mean, this it comes at a difficult time as many companies are struggling with the effects of COVID-19, but there's never a better time to improve corporate values. And obviously, the racism has no place in America, and the events of last week kind of give corporate America um, an opportunity to reaffirm that their clients, their employees, their shareholders, where they stand on this. So I think we'll come out of this on the other end much better and with a greater commitment to both environmental, social, and governance issues. As you point out, we've seen some good flows so far this year, but up until last year, there's a little over $20 billion in ESG ETFs in the U.S., which is a bit of a head-scratcher. So many financial advisors have had interest but haven't made the commitment. I think coming out of this... Not only are self-directed investors going to be more committed, but advisors are going to be more committed because their clients are going to demand it. Yeah. You, is, 20 billion, you said, is a bit of a head scratcher. You mean a head scratcher in that it's a fairly low number, 20 billion right. still, compared exactly. to you know, what we've got invested at $3 trillion in, in ETFs in general and you know, a, a $35 trillion equity market at this point in the U.S.? Well, there are many choices, and that's the idea. Today, when, when people take a step back and say, okay, how committed am I to values? And now, as you look at how much money is uh, allocated to the S&P 500, for example, how much is allocated to uh, high correlation of the S&P 500, it's in the trillions of dollars. So now, with all the choices between all the uh, ETF issuers out there, all the index providers out there, the money managers out there that all have their own versions of ESG, 
there are a heck of a lot of choices. And yeah. with the fact that you can take allocation to the S&P 500 and shift it over and not have to pay a lot of money, 11 basis points, for example, and actually in some cases yeah. have better improvement in your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Mona, you, I know you have repeatedly said that the purpose of ESG is not to try to outperform the indexes or the S&P 500. And I agree with you, that should not be the purpose. But it is actually outperforming this year, which is always a nice little thing. Uh, and I'm just looking at a couple. Uh, I know the X tracker is S&P ESG because it's indexed to the S&P 500 that, that you run, S&PE. Uh, that's only down uh, oh, about 3 percent, 4 percent this year. Uh, the S&P is down about 6%. So on a relative basis, my point is uh, the ESG funds are generally outperforming, including the one that uh, your firm uh, tracks here. I, I think the problem that I have always had with ESG and the problem people sort of come up to me and say, you know, Bob, this is nice you talk about ESG, but if you really look at what's in these things, they're basically mega cap growth funds, essentially. So even in the S&PE, it's Microsoft is the largest holding, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet and Visa, that's, that really is quite a mega cap. It's mega cap growth. It tends to be tilted towards technology, underweight energy and industrials. I guess that makes some sense if you think of what ESG uh, is. But what do, you, what do you say to people who, who, who say, oh, yeah, this is a, a tech growth fund, essentially? Is, is that a fair criticism or, or, or what's the right way to look at this? Look, when you when you think about something like ESG, it still means different things to different players, and that's okay. You know, as an index provider, we continue to cater to the needs of various different uh, investors through an, a spectrum of ESG indexing solutions. What we're offering with the S and P 500 ESG index is a sustainable alternative to the iconic S&P 500, as Tom was speaking to you earlier. So at very low levels of cost in terms of low levels of tracking error, and the objective of this specific index is to offer comparable risk and return. It's welcome that actually over the past year, we've seen some upside performance, which is great to see, and that this has been driven through a rules-based selection criteria that is indeed driven by ESG principles. But in terms of the overall sector allocation, uh, sector exposure and allocation, the objective of this index is to sort of be broadly sector neutral through its index design that lends itself to similar levels of comparable performance. But notwithstanding this tool, you know, there is a lot of evidence out there that suggests that ESG can indeed drive out performance. So it really depends on how the ESG data is being integrated and what you're trying to get out of it. But in our instance, what we're trying to yeah. do is really offer a core replacement. So for any investor that would otherwise look to the S&P 500 for getting their core US equity exposure, this version yeah. that offers numerous measurable positive impacts from an ESG standpoint offers at least similar, if not better, as we've seen uh, in terms of returns, which makes it a very compelling tool that yeah. helps to dispel the myth of an ESG versus performance trade-off.